I don't know how Kevin Feige or Ryan Reynolds managed to convince Hugh Jackman to return to the role after he said that he was done with the character after the death of the character in Logan. But here we are, which is why I decided to take a first look into the character and his next appearance in the upcoming Deadpool 3 movie and what his debut story could entail. Enjoy! Out of all the long-awaited characters that have yet to make their debut in the MCU, many will agree with me on this, that one of the most highly anticipated characters has always been Wolverine. And even though up until recently, Hugh Jackman's return for the role was up in the air, the latest Deadpool 3 movie announcement got the world stunned because it confirmed that Wolverine will in fact be returning to the MCU, together with Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. Now, I am not sure how or when Hugh decided to return to the role, but I do know that even before Disney's acquisition of the rights for the characters from Fox, Ryan wanted to do a movie, a road trip of sorts, together with Hugh's Wolverine. And it looks like his wish will be fulfilled when the movie drops in two years' time, with the movie as it stands right now scheduled to release on November 8, 2024. But what does this even mean for the future of the MCU? And more importantly, for these two characters in particular? Well, I might have some interesting details to share with you. But first, let me tell you more about the character at hand, who is also one of the most famous characters of Marvel Comics, and the chance of his background playing a huge role in his upcoming debut as well as his continuation of the story. Now, within the MCU, cursed with a berserker fury, the violent mutant known as Wolverine has a reputation for being both an outstanding hero, but also a lethal killer, a complex life he carries with him ever since the start of his life. Born as James Hallett to a wealthy Canadian family, way back at the end of the 19th century, he is forced to leave his family after his bestial abilities of accelerated healing factor, a period after he adopts the name Logan, Wandering across the world, living a long life filled with bloodshed, war, and betrayal, having Sabretooth as his arch enemy and the Japanese warrior Ogun as his sensei, he found himself living the lone wolf type of life, which eventually sees him being part of the Weapon X program, a secret US government project intended to induce superpowers to individuals for military purposes. The program puts Logan under a huge amount of pain that makes his bones get coated with one of the strongest steels out there. Adamantium, making him an even more lethal asset. After escaping from the facility, he is rescued by the side of Mac and Heather Hudson and joins Department H, where he serves as a Canadian government operative known as Wolverine. The first time, this legendary superhero name gets introduced in the comics, one for which he is very well known in today's present. Further down the line, he gets invited by Charles Xavier to join the X-Men where he continues the fight for peace between humans and mutants. However, proven to be a challenging addition to the team, as he constantly gets involved with all sorts of conflicts with his fellow teammates, especially Cyclops. But as time passes by, he grows fond of his newfound family and becomes a noteworthy member of the X-Men, which eventually makes him part of the Avengers at one point, then tasked to run a secret mutant strike team known as the X-Force, also protecting mutant kind but with some dirtier tricks, allowed to employ a little more lethal force. Wolverine was also responsible for a big hit of that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in reality, he was responsible for the reformation of the Jean Grey School while he was leading his own faction of the X-Men, when all mutant kind was given asylum in the mutant exclusive nation of Krakoa by the side of Professor Xavier. Wolverine was one of the first residents there, so you can see his importance among the X-Men. Not wanting to give you more details about the character to not bore you, I will turn my focus towards all the easter eggs that the MCU has provided for the character, as well as a theory of what his first appearance in the MCU could entail as part of the upcoming third Deadpool movie. Like all the characters that are about to come through to the MCU, the Wolverine character also received an easter egg here and there regarding the character, hints, and details pointing towards him coming to the MCU. And one of the first details of this sort came through the Incredible Hulk movie, which even though has not been confirmed of being part of the MCU, the movie is still considered as one and was a movie that mentioned the Weapon X program which had a heavy influence on Wolverine. However, one of the more recent easter eggs, and probably the biggest of them all, was probably the patch tease, as many like to call it. Finally incorporated during the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series, the fictional island of Madripoor made its debut, a place associated with Wolverine, 
with the series showcasing the Princess Bar, which in the comics was a place that Wolverine frequently visited, and it is a place where Wolverine ditched his signature yellow suit and went for a more discreet, elegant combination of suit tie and an eye patch, and while many thought that the series would lead to a direct Wolverine reveal, this easter egg of his most famous bar at the island was all we got. The two more recent easter eggs came through the latest She-Hulk Disney Plus series, and before I move forward, I should warn you that there will be spoilers regarding the newest TV show for Marvel, so beware. And with that out of the way, let me continue. During episode 2, there was an online article that Jennifer read, which stated, and I quote, Man fights with metal claws in a bar brawl, which is a clear indication towards Wolverine. A clear memo that he is there, or was part of it, I should say. And the last easter egg for Wolverine was in episode 8, when Nikki holds 6 makeup brushes between her fingers, 3 in each hand in a way that obviously referenced Wolverine's claws while she was rushing Jin to get ready for the Met Gala. The confirmation of Hugh Jackman returning in the role of Wolverine for the third Deadpool movie created some massive questions on its own. First and foremost, how would the character be able to be present in the MCU when he clearly smashed that subscribe button and ring that notification bell? On the more serious side of things, However, he clearly died in Logan, a detail that hints towards the multiverse having a thing to say about the transition of the two characters. This also goes well with the movie's placement in the multiverse saga. There aren't any confirmed details about the story, but the audiences are well aware that the two will team up in some fashion, giving both actors a chance to share the screen once again after the last experience in the X-Men Origins Wolverine. Wolverine's part in the movie could have massive implications for the movie and the wider MCU as well, especially if Ryan's plans come to fruition, who said that he would have liked a road trip to take place in his next movie, which was even before Disney bought the rights for the characters. A Rushman-style road trip story involving both Deadpool and Wolverine, which could mean that he will get to see the same event being told through multiple people's perspectives, with each of them trying to make a better person of themselves. And knowing just what kind of personalities the two have, I don't think I need to say anything more than what I have said so far, in order for you to understand everything that's at stake, right? All in all, there are a lot of details, bits, and pieces regarding Wolverine, and many fans, including me, cannot wait to see what the MCU has cooked up for the character. But I will bet that he will be one of the key characters in the upcoming events of MCU Phase 5 and Phase 6. Period. See you in the next video.